Hi everyone, this is Investing Club. In this video, I'm gonna show you the three key pieces of information you have to have to check before you buy a stock. Especially for beginner investors in the stock market, you have to check these three key pieces of information. And I can tell you from experience, these three things can be the difference between a stock that loses money and a stock that goes up and makes you a lot of money as an investor. And I don't care what kind of investor you are. You could be a value investor, a dividend investor, or someone who invests for growth. Every stock worth buying should have these three things. So let's go through it and take a look at this three-step checklist you have to check off before buying stocks. And be sure to watch until the end of the video so you can have a full understanding of these three important metrics I look for when I invest in stocks. So the first metric you should be looking at for any stock you're thinking about buying are their margins. Specifically, I like to look at the profit margins. And what I'm looking for when I look at the profit margins of a company is that they are stable or they're even increasing over time. So I have the formula for the operating profit margin right here. It's simply their operating income over their revenue. So profit margins are a percent. And what that number represents is the percent of revenue that makes it down the income statement and comes out as income on the end. We can use a simple example to illustrate this. Say you have a lemonade stand and you sell a cup of lemonade for $10, but it costs you $5 to buy the water, to buy the lemons, to buy the sugar, to buy all the ingredients to make one cup of lemonade. So if the cost of making one cup of lemonade is $5 and the revenue from one cup is $10, then your profit margin would be $5, and in this case would be 50%. And this is one of the most important but overlooked numbers in investing, because declining profit margins mean the company isn't making as much income per sale. So beginner investors might take a look at a stock and say their revenue is going up, so this company is growing. But you have to be careful because even if revenues are growing, if their profit margins are actually shrinking, that means their revenues can go up, but they still won't be making any more income. They still won't be making any more on the bottom line. And ultimately, as investors, that's what you care about, the amount of profit that a company can bring in. And in addition, declining profit margins signal that a company is losing its competitive advantage. So now we'll go back to our lemonade stand example. Now, if it costs you $6 to buy all the ingredients for one cup of lemonade, your profit margin is just shrank to 40%. And if you're thinking about buying a stock and you see their profit margins trending downwards, that's a serious concern because it means either this, it's costing this company more to, to produce the goods that they're selling, or they're not able to sell their product for as much as they could before. Both things aren't very good for the future growth of a company. So right now I'll show you an easy way to look up the history of any company's profit margins so that you can see how the trend has been going over time. So what you do is go on this website, it's macrotrends.net, and then you can look up any stock. So for example, we'll do Apple. So we can look up Apple. And they have a tab here called margins, and that's what we wanna look at. So we click on margins and then profit margins. And here you go, they give us a nice chart going back all the way to 2005 showing us what Apple's profit margin has been each year. And they also have gross margin and operating margin, which are other important things you could look at, but my favorite is the profit margin, which is called the net margin down here. And so as of March 2020, Apple's profit margin was around 21%. And if you look back over their history, this has been pretty consistent, right? Back in 2013, what was their profit margin? Pretty much the same thing, around 21%. And so for the past five to 10 years, Apple's profit margin has stayed very consistent. And this is exactly what you wanna look for in a stock that you buy. And when you take a longer term look at Apple's profit margins, back in 2013, they were only 10%. So over time, Apple's profit margins have actually gone up. And this is exactly what you wanna be looking for when you're trying to find high quality stocks that will give you a good return. So now let's go to the second very important item that you have to look at before you buy a stock, and that is the debt levels of the stock. Now the bottom line about debt is taking on too much debt will lower the company's future earnings. And a lot of new investors don't realize this when they buy a company with a lot of debt. They see, oh, this company's taking on debt to buy a factory. Oh, they're taking on debt to buy back shares. And that's good for the company. It'll make the stock price go up. But what those investors don't understand is what the company is basically doing by taking on debt is borrowing from their future selves because eventually they're gonna have to pay back their debt. And what money are they gonna use for that? They're gonna use their gross income. So in effect, what too much debt is gonna do is gonna is that it's going to gradually reduce their, the company's profit margins, which we just talked about, should be consistent. So the thing about debt is debt is actually okay and can even be beneficial to a company. It can help them out if it's used for the right purposes. Now, if you watch my channel, you know I'm critical of companies doing excessive stock buybacks and taking on debt to do stock buybacks. And so for anyone that doesn't know, a stock buyback is a company uses money to buy its own stock. 
And to make it really simple, the only thing that stock buybacks do is push up the stock price in the short term. So a lot of these CEOs that get bonuses based on the price of their stock say, let's just take out debt and buy back our own shares. So the stock price will go up and I'll get a fat bonus at the end of the year. But as we've seen in the last few months, this has some pretty bad consequences if the economy starts to go down. This is a chart of what Boeing did from 2013 to 2019. Look at their net income compared to the amount they spent on stock buybacks. The buyback amount is $43 billion, but they only made $41 billion of net income. And so what does this tell you? It means that Boeing didn't even make enough money to do all of these buybacks, so it means they had to have taken out debt to buy back their own shares. And that worked out pretty well. If you look at the long-term chart as Boeing, during this time, look how high their stock price went. But the problem is now, when we have an economic slowdown and people aren't flying as much, the stock crashes 80%, and now they have to beg the government for a bailout. So that's the problem with companies taking on excessive debt. Now that being said, there are ways for companies to use debt in a way that will help them. And I put it down here, companies should use debt if it will increase future earnings. And so this could mean a lot of things. This could mean a company hiring more workers, it could mean building a new factory, it could mean developing a new product, something that will help them create more, produce more, and sell more is probably a good use of debt. So if you take, so just for a quick example, we can take a look at Tesla. Tesla as a company is taking on a ton of debt to build their gigafactory in Shanghai. Now, even though they use billions of dollars of debt to build this factory, it was probably the right move for Tesla. Why? Because once this factory is finished building, it'll allow them to produce such a higher number of cars, and then they'll be able to sell those extra cars to bring in profit in the future. So that's really the correct use of debt. Using it for something that will allow the company to make more money in the future, not something like stock buybacks, which don't actually affect the company that and only affects the stock price. So here's a way to find out if a company has too much debt compared to its history. So the website is gurufocus.com. So you go on this website and you type in any stock. For an example, we can look at AT&T, their ticker symbol is T. And so you type in the stock, you go to the summary and this screen pops up. And right down here, a very important metric is the interest coverage ratio. And what this interest coverage ratio tells you is how many times their income they're making can cover their interest payment on their debt. And so for this number, the higher, the better. The higher the interest coverage ratio is, the easier the company can pay the interest payments for their debt with the amount of money they're making. And this website gives you a really cool thing. It tells you this ratio compared to the company's entire history. So if you look at AT&T's interest coverage ratio right now, it is a 3.57. So what that means is with the money that AT&T made this year, it could pay the interest on their debt three and a half times. Now, whether that's attractive or not is up to you to decide, but if you look at their history, that is among the worst their interest coverage has ever been, right? The highest it's ever been is over a seven, and that looks a lot better from an investor standpoint than the 3.29 where they are now. So what this tells you is that AT&T has really loaded on their debt in recent years, and if I was someone who owned AT&T or was looking at buying AT&T stock, this is a cause for concern and something I would look into in more, and something I would look into and research more before buying the stock. Now the last thing you have to look at before buying a stock is that company's market share in the industry they're in. This is a super important metric to look at because it tells you how the company is doing compared to their competitors. And what you wanna look for is a market share that's stable or increasing. So again, going to our lemonade stand example, let's say there's 10 people who drink lemonade in your city. Out of those 10 people, three of them drink lemonade at your lemonade stand and the other seven go to your competitors on the other side of town. What you wanna do as a business is attract more of your competitors' customers over to you. So instead of only having three of the 10 lemonade drinkers in your city, you could try to bring over six or seven. So a perfect example of a company with stable and increasing market share was Apple back in 2010, 2011. That's the picture of the chart I have here. Apple is the gray section, and this is the market share between Apple, Android, the Windows Phone, RIM, now what this chart shows you is that all those other phone companies, their market share was flattening or even going down, but Apple's market share kept going up. So if you looked at this chart, you would know that more smartphone owners are buying Apple phones compared to other smartphones. And this is a super important piece of information to know because it can really give you a better picture of the company's competitive advantage. Right? Competitive advantage is what makes this company better than its competitors. And so if you look at Apple from this chart, and their market share is going up, obviously they have a competitive advantage, right? Their product has something that makes people want Apple's phones compared to their competitors. And so if you can find a company with that sustainable advantage, over the long term, you're gonna make a lot of money investing with that company. So that's a recap of the three things you have to look at before buying a stock for beginners. If this is your first time watching my video, subscribe to the channel right now 
where I post videos like this almost every day. And if you got something of value out of this video, hit the like button so that this important video can reach more viewers. If you haven't already, join my Discord chats, the first link in the description. I'm on there every day, and I'm always talking to my subscribers about their latest stock picks and what they think about certain stocks. So that's it for now, and I'll see you on the next video.